As you look up at the majestic night sky, do you also think that the universe hides great secrets? Throughout history, we have been curiously searching for the answer to the question of whether we are alone in the universe. This question has puzzled many philosophers and scientists for thousands of years. In this video, we will pursue this mysterious question and examine how and where astronomers search for life outside Earth. Thanks to astrobiology, we can make assumptions about how widespread life may be in the universe. But the questions we wonder are, did life originate only here on Earth? Or are there traces of life and advanced civilizations in other corners of the universe? The Fermi Paradox adds to the depth of these questions. Considering the extraordinary size and age of our universe, it seems a strange coincidence that life could have arisen only on Earth. Perhaps one day we will receive messages from other civilizations that we are not alone in the universe, and we will communicate with them. In the meantime, we should keep our curiosity and passion for discovery alive and continue our research. Journey to the Origin of Life In the search for life in the universe, we must first investigate how life originated on our planet. But even this problem involves great mysteries. Astrobiologists are working on two theories about how life originated on Earth, chemical evolution and panspermia. These theories shed light on the origin of life on Earth and reveal striking findings about how widespread life may be in the universe. According to the theory of chemical evolution, the basic building blocks of life were formed from simple compounds on early Earth. Sugars, amino acids and other organic molecules necessary for life may have come together under certain conditions to form more complex molecules. Violent volcanic eruptions and lightning strikes, hot mud pools and thermal activity on the ocean floor during the early Earth may have triggered these simple molecules to form more complex organic molecules, initiating the first steps of life. In 1953, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey's famous experiment showed that this process could occur even in simple laboratory conditions. According to panspermia, another alternative theory to chemical evolution, the first living beings came to Earth as microorganisms from space, or the basic building blocks of life were carried to Earth by meteorites and comets. We know that water, inorganic and organic molecules, which are the basic building blocks that we can call the seeds of life, of course came from the outside world. There are even meteorites that we know came from Mars. However, it seems highly unlikely that microorganisms could have traveled through space and the Earth's atmosphere to reach our planet. Even so, other questions are being asked about the origin of these microorganisms, and it is predicted that a chemical evolution may have occurred even outside the Earth. Both of these theories may be correct. Astrobiologists are carrying out laboratory experiments and analyzing data from space in order to find answers to these questions. The search for life elsewhere in the universe is another part of this great puzzle. Thanks to the theories about the origin of life on Earth, astrobiologists have turned their eyes to the search for life outside the Earth. Let us now examine where the traces of life outside the Earth are being searched for. Traces of life in the solar system Astrobiologists start their search for extraterrestrial life from our immediate neighborhood, the planets and moons in our solar system. Because they have obtained a lot of data thanks to the spacecraft sent to the planets. Of course, it is easier to send spacecraft to nearby planets and search for life rather than looking for life on distant stars. Mars is undoubtedly the most popular planet where we are looking for life outside the Earth. We now have very conclusive evidence that there was water and even oceans on Mars in the past. Dried lake beds, canyons, river beds on Mars are evidence that water once existed on this planet. Even today, the presence of frozen water under the soil on Mars and even water still flowing in the equatorial regions have been detected. Based on life on Earth, we know how important the presence of water is for the formation of life. NASA's Viking vehicles Curiosity and Perseverance rovers sent to Mars are examining the geological past of Mars and searching for traces of life. The most recently sent Perseverance is deeply analyzing an old lake bed in the Jezero crater on Mars, where they think there may have been life in the past. Although no conclusive evidence has yet been found, these investigations have provided many clues that life once existed on Mars. Venus, another close neighbor of ours, 
has very harsh atmospheric and surface conditions compared to Mars. The surface temperature of Venus reaches 470 degrees Celsius, and most of its atmosphere is composed of carbon dioxide. The planet is also very active volcanically, making it almost impossible for life to form on its surface. However, a very interesting discovery was made in the upper layers of Venus' atmosphere. The upper layers of Venus' atmosphere are very favorable in terms of temperature and pressure conditions. It is in this upper layer that a gas called phosphine has been detected. The interesting feature of phosphine gas is that it emerges only as a result of biological processes. This means that the possibility of microbial life in the temperate upper layers of the Venusian atmosphere is quite high. Venus has attracted a lot of attention after the discovery of phosphine gas and will be analyzed in more depth by future missions. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is one of the most exotic places in the search for life in the solar system. Because Titan has a dense atmosphere and lakes made of liquid methane, the discovery of organic molecules on the surface of Titan as a result of NASA's Cassini-Huygens missions drew the attention of astrobiologists to this satellite. Organic molecules found on this large satellite may be a clue that life exists here. Due to different atmospheric and surface conditions, life may have evolved very differently on Titan than on Earth. Titan is also thought to have oceans of water and ammonia beneath its surface. Titan's double-layered structure may have created an environment for the emergence of different forms of life. In addition to Mars, Venus and Titan, Jupiter's ocean worlds such as Europa and Ganymede are also remarkable places in the search for life. These ice-covered moons are thought to harbor liquid water oceans beneath their surfaces. These oceans may have both ideal temperature conditions for life and may contain the basic chemical building blocks of life. NASA's Europa Clipper and ESA's JUICE missions were planned to discover traces of life on these icy worlds. Water jets emerging from cracks in Europa's surface allowed the study of biological traces in the oceans deep beneath. In addition, Ganymede's magnetic field may offer a more sheltered environment for life to form in the depths of the liquid oceans. These studies show that ocean worlds have an important place in the search for extraterrestrial life. The study of Europa and Ganymede shows how critical it is for astrobiologists to investigate ice-covered celestial bodies. Efforts to find life in the universe are not limited to planets similar to Earth, but also reveal that life can exist in different environmental conditions. The Role of Space Telescopes for Searching for Extraterrestrial Life Telescopes sent into space in the last 35 years have played a crucial role in the search for life beyond Earth. Space telescopes such as Hubble and James Webb are analyzing the gases in the atmospheres of exoplanets in detail, looking for clues to signs of life. In particular, the James Webb Space Telescope is capable of detecting basic molecules such as water, methane and carbon dioxide and organic molecules, which are essential for life on exoplanets. The Hubble Space Telescope has made significant contributions to the understanding of the birth, development, and death phases of stars. James Webb, on the other hand, thanks to its infrared technology, can determine the chemical components in the atmosphere of an exoplanet as it passes in front of its star with a method called transition spectroscopy, and can make predictions about whether there is life by analyzing the molecules contained in these chemical components. Undoubtedly, the data obtained from James Webb's observations will make very important contributions to studies in the field of astrobiology. Molecules such as water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide show clues to the existence of the basic building blocks of life. In addition, the discovery of methane gas in the atmosphere of a planet is thought to be an indicator of the potential existence of life, as it will be associated with biological processes. The James Webb and Hubble Space Telescopes can analyze the atmospheres of exoplanets to investigate in detail their chemical structures their distance from their stars and their surface temperatures. It is critical to find out whether the exoplanet under study is in the Goldilocks zone, the habitable zone of the star system. In the future, perhaps we will receive messages from one of these exoplanets that will prove that we are not alone in the universe. The Search for Intelligent Life, Project SETI Undoubtedly one of the most interesting researches carried out from Earth is the SETI project. In this project, 
radio telescopes are used to capture and analyze radio signal messages coming from the depths of the universe and to investigate whether there is extraterrestrial intelligent life. The purpose of these radio telescopes is to capture and analyze unnatural signals. For example, the fact that celestial bodies such as pulsars emit regular radio signals indicates that they are a natural source. Signals from artificial sources, like intelligent extraterrestrial life, are thought to be irregular. The most challenging part of the SETI project is receiving signals from deep space, thousands of light years away. If we think of it this way, a signal from 1,000 light years away takes 1,000 years to reach us. During this time, we do not know what happened at the source of the signal. In other words, the fact that the data obtained with the elapsed time factor is outdated and that there are technological limits should be taken into consideration. Although no concrete signal has yet been reached in the SETI project, millions of data are analyzed every day. In addition to the efforts to find intelligent life, many big steps to unravel the secrets of the universe continue to be realized with the help of the SETI project. With more advanced observations and breakthroughs in technology, we will be much closer to finding extraterrestrial life. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover the secrets of life in the universe. So, do you think we are alone in the universe? Don't forget to write your opinions in the comments. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more space and astronomy content. See you in the next video. Stay with the stars.